Hey guys, my name is Naluxin, and today we're going to do an approach to hematuria for your Natkowski exam. This, this video is made in partnership with StarMed Medical Education Program. Disclaimer before we get into this video, the content of this video is made only for informational and educational purposes only. It is not to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Before we get into it, we need to know the difference between gross and microscopic hematuria. Gross is when you can see with the naked eye. You don't need a microscope. Urine can appear red, pink, or brown. For microscopic, to the naked eye, it looks like normal urine. But when you put it under a microscope, you'll see red blood cells. To be defined as microscopic hematuria, there has to be three or more red blood cells per high power field. When taking a history with the patient who presents with hematuria, it's important to use layman terms. As the patient, use blood and urine or bloody urine. And also ask questions in a certain order. Now, when you start with the patient, ask about OCD, onset course duration. Ask about the timing. When did it start? When did it finish? How long did it last for? Is this the first time it happened? Has it happened before? If so, how many times and when? Ask about if there are any changes in their lifestyle recently. This could help you for your differential diagnosis. If the patient had pain with hematuria, ask about PQRST. Was the pain in relation to any position? How's the quality of the pain? Get the patient to describe it to you. Does the pain radiate? For example, does it go from your flank to your groin? Severity of the pain. On a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the worst you ever felt in your life, how would you rate this pain? Ask for any triggers. Did the patient do any strenuous exercise recently? Did they experience any trauma? So on. Whenever talking with the patient about abnormal body secretions or fluids, make sure you ask about coca plus minus B. Ask about the color of the urine, odor of the urine, consistency of the urine, Amount. See the patient can tell you how much. Teaspoon, cupful, tablespoon, handful, however they say it, take notice. Was there blood in the urine? Ask about obstructive symptoms. This can help for narrowing your differential diagnosis, possible stones, or even BPH. Ask the patient if they have difficulty initiating urination. Was there any change in the stream? Did they notice any dribbling while urinating? Do they have a sensation of incomplete emptying of the bladder after, after urinating? Look for irritative symptoms. Ask how often it happens. Does the patient pee during the nighttime? Do they wake up to pee? Do they have the sense of you're going to urinate for urgency? Do they have loss of control with Valsalva maneuvers? For example, with coughing, sneezing, bending over, does the patient void involuntarily? Does the patient experience any flank pain? Patients may say they have pain in their mid to lower back. Does the patient experience dysuria, pain with the urination? <clears throat> Ask about bleeding symptoms. Does the patient notice any bleeding from their gums when brushing or from eating? Or bleeding from their nose without any trauma from picking their nose, for example. Ask about bloody stools. Ask about menstrual history for female patients. Ask about their last menstrual period. This is important for possible cross-contamination in their urine. Ask if they use any anticoagulants. Ask the patient if they have any history of coagulopathies or a history of sickle cell disease. Ask about some associated symptoms. See if the patient had any changes in their, in their bowel movements. Have they noticed any groin or pelvic masses? Any abdominal or pelvic pain? Have they noticed any sexual dysfunction recently? Have they had a recent UTI or repeated episodes of UTIs? Does the patient use medications such as rifampin, which can change body secretions, including urine and tears, to orange or red? Phenytoin? Or even cyclophosphamide, if they're undergoing chemotherapy? Ask about constitutional symptoms. This can help narrow down your diagnosis to possible cancer or illness or septic or a possible sepsis. Ask about fever. Ask about, ask about malaise. Has the patient experienced any night sweats or chills? Have they noticed any loss of weight? Unintentionally, of course, or loss of appetite. Ask the patient about renal failure symptoms. 
Have they noticed any decreased urine output? Are they experiencing any shortness of breath? Have they noticed any puffiness of their eyes or face or any generalized swelling? The last two, as mentioned, could happen from proteinuria for glomerular problems. For metastatic symptoms, you want to ask the patient for brain symptoms, for brain spread, such as headache, nausea, or vomiting. For lungs, you can ask about cough, phlegm, hemoptysis. For your liver, jaundice, puritis, itching, acolic stools, pale stools, or dark urine. For their back, ask about back pain, any numbness, or any weakness. Or if they have any loss of incontinence, of continence recently, or experiencing incontinence. Ask about their past medical history. See if the patient had any past illnesses, conditions, or chronic conditions. Diabetes, UTIs, polycystic kidney disease, renal stones, coagulopathies. You can even ask the patient if they've had a recent strep infection of the throat, or strep-like symptoms that they may have not got diagnosed. Ask patients if they have had any appropriate screenings for their age. For example, for males above 40, ask if they've had any digital rectal exams or PSAs. See if the patient had any abnormal results. Inquire about hospitalizations. Any surgeries to the abdominal or pelvic region? Are there any medications, as mentioned before? Does the patient have any allergies? Inquire about the patient's family history. Do they know of any bleeding disorders within the family? Any cancers? Any renal stones within the family? Do they know of familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia in the family? For social history, ask about the patient smoking. Do they smoke? Are they actively smoking? Have they smoked before? If so, how much? How often? So you can calculate pack per year. Packs per day. How many packs in a day? and total amount in a year. See if the patient drinks alcohol. How often? Chronic alcohol use can cause chronic dehydration leading to stone formation. Look out for recreational drugs. Ask the patient, have they used any recreational medications, drugs, any supplements, and ask about intravenous drug use. Inquire about their occupation. Some workplace exposures can cause certain problems. For example, if the patient had worked in a chemical dye factory, exposure to alanine could cause bladder cancer. Sexual history. Ask them if they are sexually active. Before you ask these questions, make sure they are comfortable with answering these questions and everything you talk about within this encounter is completely private and confidential. Continuing, ask them if they are active. How many partners? You could ask if they are in a monogamous relationship. Are they using any contraception? Do they have any STIs? Have they been positive for any STIs before? Or if they even get tested for STIs? Ask the patient if they've noticed any recent ulcers or discharges within the general region. And lastly, you can ask them extra questions about their diet. Inquire what they eat usually. Does the patient eat a lot of red meats? That could be, uh, that could help for your uh, differential diagnosis of renal stones. Does the patient sleep enough? Do they feel refreshed when they wake up? How many hours of sleep? Does the patient exercise? If so, how often and the intensity? And you can ask about stressors. Any recent stressors at home, at work, financial, academically? So on. Here's some urinary symptoms. For urinary symptoms, you can ask these questions in general. Has there been any change in urinary habits? Do you have any pain or burning during urination? Have you noticed any change in the color of your urine? How often do you have to urinate? Do you have to wake up at night to urinate? Do you have any difficulty urinating? Do you feel that you haven't completely emptied your bladder after urination? Do you need to strain or push during urination? Have you noticed any weakness in your stream? Have you noticed any blood in your urine? Do you feel as though you need to urinate, but then very little urine comes out? Do you feel as though you need to urinate all the time? Do you feel as though 
you have very little time to make it to the bathroom once you feel the urge to urinate. Once again, you can use this in general for any urinary symptoms. So let's start with some differential diagnosis at the level of your glomerulus. You can have immune-mediated problems such as lupus, lupus nephritis, see if the patient has any family history and any other symptoms such as mal or rash. IG nephropathy, see if the patient has had strep or strep-like symptoms that may have been undiagnosed within the past week, seven days. IG vasculitis, post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Ask if the patient has had any strep or strep-like symptoms that have been undiagnosed more than a week ago. That is the key differentiating factor between PSGN and IgA nephropathy. For good pasture syndrome, patients will present with hematuria and hemoptysis. There are also vasculitis, polyangitis with granulomatosis, formerly known as Wagner's granulomatosis. Patients can present with multi-system myotic problems. For example, problems with the kidney and problems with the ears, such as ear infections. Microscopic polyangitis and schurich strauss syndrome. At the level of the kidney, we have pyelonephritis. Watch out for pregnant patients as progesterone can dilate the ureters, causing backflow of bacteria into the kidney, or any patients with a history of recurring UTIs. Even patients with diabetes mellitus. For renal cell carcinoma, look out with patients with risk factors for cancer, smoking, drinking, familiar history, and so on. For PKD, look out for patients with familiar history of kidney masses and hypertension. Or subarachnoid hemorrhages. Continuing at the level of the ureter, bladder, and urethra, you can have UTIs. Bladder cancers. Look out for patients who present with painless hematuria who are smokers or ex-smokers. Nephrolithiasis. Look out for those previously mentioned risk factors. Uretral strictures could be caused from healing of surgery or congenital. Hemorrhagic cystitis from cyclophosphamide. Patients who are undergoing chemotherapy or patients who are undergoing pelvic radiation or have went through. Trauma. You can have iatrogenic trauma from Foley catheters or a recent urologic procedure. Or the patient might have had direct trauma from motor vehicle accidents, motorcycle accidents, injuries from sports, or physical alter altercations. At the level of the prostate, we have BPH and prostatic cancer. Watch out for elderly males above the age of 40. And we have others, such as exercise-induced hematuria, idiopathic causes, menstrual contamination, rhabdomyolysis, which can be caused from strenuous exercise, leading to myoglobinuria, which can look like hematuria, hemolytic anemia, porphyria, or excessive meat consumption. For physical examination, it's important to do vital signs first, Look at their temperature for any fever, respiratory rate. Take note if they have any struggling for when they're breathing, heart rate, blood pressure. Look out for hypertension or possible sepsis. For abdominal exam, make sure you always observe the patient's abdomen first before proceeding. Then you can palpate the patient and look at the patient's face. Look out for any discomfort or signs of pain. After that, you will percuss for any hepatosplenomegaly and then auscultate. Look out for any lymph node enlargement, especially within the pelvic region. Conduct a genital urinary examination. And for males above 40, conduct a rectal exam. For workup, depending on what you have for your differential diagnosis, here's a list. You can do cystoscopy, possible trauma, ultrasound or renal of the renal or bladder, or any suspected masses or stones, possibly, CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis, urine analysis and cytology for cancer cells, bacteria, and so on, prostate biopsy for prostatic cancer, CBC and CMP for anemic causes, sepsis, so on, P 
PT or PTT for coagulation problems or bleeding disorders, and a PSA, once again, for BPH or prostatic cancer. Before we wrap up, let's take a look at some helpful mnemonics. We have OCD for onset course duration. Patients with pain, ask about PQRST. Position, quality, radiation, severity, trigger. For patients experiencing urinary problems, ask about duff. Dysuria, discharge, urgency, frequency, flow, fever, flank pain. For patients with secretions or bodily fluids, ask about coca plus minus B. Color, odor, consistency, amount, and if there's blood present. If patients present with any secretion of blood and any fluids in any type of way, keep in mind the four T's. TB infection, tuberculosis, tumor, trauma, or blood thinners. And finally, if a patient presents with hematuria, think of this differential diagnosis list. Hitters, hematologic or coagulation disorder, infection, trauma, tumor, exercise, renal disorders, or stones. All right. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you guys learned a couple of things from this. Make sure you practice for your Nakoski and good luck.